Turn on the scanner, please. Very good. I think our moment has come. The world belongs to us. <laughs> I think eventually. <clears throat> now, Mr. President, this message is for the immediate attention of you, Mr. President, the President of the United States. Sir, a nuclear missile from my doomsday machine is targeted on Washington, D.C. I shall fire that missile at precisely 8 p.m., one week from today, totally destroying your capital city. Unless, sir, unless you place one billion dollars in gold bullion in a buoyant capsule at this location, sir, 172 degrees west and 16 degrees, that's one six degrees north. Now, sir, if you will frame your radar on the uninhabited island of Akatoa in the southwest Pacific. Thank you. Now, Akatoa is twice as big an area as Washington, D.C., and I now intend to eliminate that island as proof of my ability and of my determination to do as I say that I'll do. You activate the turret. Soon the world will know what power we possess. Activate turret. Prepare Delta Beam. Delta beam, fire. Delta beam, fire. That should convince the president that this was no empty threat. Hmm?
that? You mean, what is that? We better find out. It's an airlock. It's not a U.S. Navy design or any other Navy I know of. I don't get it. Let's find that man in the glass cylinder, if that's what we saw. Flatter me, sir. Who are you, sir? Identify yourself. Commander Tom Franklin, sir, United States Navy. Lieutenant Jim Porter, sir, United States Navy. What are you doing on board? How did you get here? We're with the U.S. Pacific Fleet, sir. Special assignment underwater. What is the date? The 9th, sir, April 9th. I speak of the year, man, the year. What year are we in? 1978. Again? 1978. Remarkable. Amazing. It worked. My experiment worked. The generator is working once again. The temperature has risen, allowing me to emerge from my nest. Your generator probably came on because of the turbulence from the naval bombardment. War game, sir. War, games, plus a change, plus c'est la même chose. Do you understand French? Yes, sir. The more things change, the more they remain the same. Congratulations, Lieutenant. Take your ease, gentlemen. Now, you mentioned war games. You're not aboard a ship of the line. The Nautilus is not a military vessel. Come, let me present her to you. Have you lost the power of locomotion? You did say Nautilus. This is the Nautilus, yes. Then you must be Captain Nemo. Given the evidence, Commander, that is an inescapable deduction. You're trying to tell me you're real? No, Lieutenant. You are trying to believe it. But, sir, Captain Nemo's a fictional character out of a book by Jules Verne. Did it ever occur to you, Commander, that the author was not only a novelist, but a biographer as well? Come along, gentlemen. ago was when he went into hibernation. No one will ever believe me. I believe you just as soon as I develop my pictures. This reef 
fangs over my head like the sword of Damocles. I have been imprisoned here for over a hundred years. If I can leave this reef, I can resume my search for Atlantis. Atlantis? Sir, are you referring to the continent that's supposed to be lost? Now, that really is fiction, isn't it? Fiction? Are the pyramids fiction? Or Stonehenge? Or the Mayan cities? Or the statuary of Easter Island? Atlantis is fiction only until I find it. I have searched the world over, collecting ancient maps and ancient charts. So find it I shall, despite this momentary interruption of a hundred years. You must have run into quite a storm. On the 16th of March, 1877, Nautilus was locked fast under this reef by a seismic tidal wave. I ordered the crew to surface, and I made Nautilus secure. Then I took a reasonable gamble. I placed myself in a dormant state, hoping that somehow I might, by some miracle, survive. It would appear that I have. If Jules Verne was still alive, he could start writing a whale of a sequel. Not yet. I have not completed my odyssey, and I won't have until I reach Atlantis. of our death seems to have been premature, Commander. It's a real pleasure to have my mistakes pointed out to me. Sir, it sure is nice to be alive, but is there any chance in our rejoining the living? Once I restore propulsion power. Don't you mean if? I never mean if. What do you use for fuel? Follow me and see for yourself. Don't tell me this is a nuclear reactor. That is precisely what it is. You had fission a hundred years ago? 127 years ago, to be exact. Now, if you will follow me to the crew's quarters, you can get out of your rubber skins and into appropriate clothing, and we can be on our way. Sir, these clothes are absolutely terrific. I didn't think they'd be so comfortable. We were not barbarians. Come, gentlemen, let us proceed. Impossible. Half speed. My damaged propellers are forcing me to crawl along at this rate. Crawl? But perhaps I can do somewhat better. We will be cruising at 6,000 feet, and I may be able to increase the speed when we reach the easterly currents. 6,000 feet? 
No submarine can withstand that kind of pressure. You're wrong, Lieutenant. Nautilus can. Sir, excuse me. How would you like to visit San Francisco? San Francisco? Nautilus has been in the water for a hundred years. You know my destination. I am heading for Atlantis. You could use a dry dock. And the United States Navy has the best dry dock facility in the entire world. Well, I do have propeller damage, and I need stores and provisions. And, of course, even Nautilus needs refitting once every hundred years. Very well, gentlemen, I am altering course for San Francisco. Yes, sir, I understand, sir. Situation is critical. Yes, sir. Very good, sir. I know where to find you. Be there. Oh, you're not dead. No, well, sir, we're well and alive. You must have been at a masquerade party. Hardly, sir. We've brought you a customer. We think he'll turn out to be very profitable to you. Who are you? This is hardly my idea of a naval base. I asked you a question, mister. Who are you? Mr. Miller, this is Captain Nemo. Captain Nemo? The Captain Nemo? There is only one, sir. And naturally, you arrived aboard the Nautilus. Naturally. You brought me all the way to San Francisco for this kind of treatment? Goodbye, gentlemen. Please, sir. Mr. Miller. Sir, give us just a minute. Why? We were cruising in the Nautilus at 6,000 feet. It was like being in a swimming pool. And then Captain Nemo, he fired up his nuclear reactor. We took off at 60 knots. That's half speed. Here are the pictures that I took of the Nautilus. Sir, we need him. Captain. Captain, here's our only chance to get to Atlantis. Won't you come in? Very well, I'm convinced you're Captain Nemo. I know who I am. Who are you, sir? We three are members of a naval intelligence unit. Oh, it's an elite group assigned only to combat the highest priority threats to the United States. Now, they take their orders from me. But the entire organization takes its orders from one man only. This instrument is called a telephone. And it connects me directly to the White House in Washington, D.C. Now. What can I do for you? I need a crew. Experienced submariners. I can supply you with a full complement of men. I need today's communications devices. Done. My prop needs adjustment. I need stores and provisions. And most important of all, a dry dock, remote and private. Nautilus has been in the water for over 100 years. And you shall have it. Now, what do I get in return? I'll pay for everything, Mr. Miller. In gold. The White House is not a commercial enterprise, Captain. But we might be able to work out another rate of exchange. Everything's shipshape. Splendid. I sail for Atlantis today. I'm on my way. You'll be here in a minute, sir. Good.
What is it? Mr. Miller, sir. Ah, Mr. Miller. Nautilus is operating perfectly. I am in your debt, sir. You are, Captain. You are indeed. And toward settlement of that debt, I must ask you first to pay strict attention to this videotape that was received in Washington exactly one week ago today. Mr. President, a nuclear missile from my doomsday machine is targeted on Washington, D.C. I shall fire that missile at precisely 8 p.m. one week from today, totally destroying your capital city. Unless, sir, unless you place one billion dollars in gold bullion in a buoyant capsule at this location, sir, 172 degrees west, and 16 degrees, that's one six degrees north. And just who is that? That is Professor Cunningham, a scientific genius whose life is devoted to, shall we say, a militaristic philosophy? Does this scientific genius actually have in his possession what he says he has? He has built an awesome submarine, the Raven. His doomsday machine has the world in a vice. Now I understand why you gentlemen were so anxious to have me visit San Francisco. You need Nautilus and me to stop this fiend, huh? Guilty. You did need a new prop, sir. Commander Franklin and Lieutenant Porter are two of the Navy's most experienced underwater intelligence experts, Captain. They were specifically chosen to counter the threat of Professor Cunningham. And now I am assigning them as your top aides aboard Nautilus. If I accept the mission. Well, Captain Nemo? Is the professor heavily armed? He did obliterate the island of Akatoa. Mr. Miller, I'm going to repay that debt. I have less than 24 hours. You will give me the last known position of Raven. <laughs> millions of lives for a paltry billion dollars in gold. That's an insignificant sliver of the national gross income. These people's lives are in your hands, Mr. President, and their deaths will be in your heart. You have five hours. Come on. Come on. Our present position is here. Now, it seems to me that... That's the Professor submarine. Take us to the bottom. What good is that? Now, if we can see him, he can see us. Captain, you can run, but you can't hide. Listen carefully. I am not retreating. I am advancing into battle. Now, take us to the bottom. Aye, aye, sir. Flat forward. All right. Flooding forward. The professor will surely try to destroy us, but I'm ready for him with my electric force field. That'll save all hands aboard this ship. But what about the millions of people in Washington? I intend to save Washington. But in order to do so, I have to see my adversary and personally get the feel of the man. You mean you're going to visit him? There's no other way, Lieutenant. I'm not clairvoyant. I have to know something of my opponent's strategy and tactics, his missiles. Captain. You're signing your own death notice. Perhaps, but I have no alternative. Sir, we can't just stand by and watch you commit suicide. I'm tired of this. I'm a sea captain and not a member of a debating society. I'm going to board the Raven, and there's no way you can stop me. Captain. You'll need someone to hold your coat. A diving suit has no coat. Oh, you want to second me in my duel against the professor. 
Bravo, Commander. I accept your offer. Submersible must be destroyed. What? Why, that president is mad. He is stark, staring mad. He knows that I obliterated an entire island, and then he sends a submarine to stop me. Oh, very well. We shall uh, dispose of it immediately. Here, activate the turret. Activate turret. Fire delta beam. Fire delta beam. Amazing. Amazing. No vessel can survive contact with the delta beam. Therefore, that submarine must have neutralized the ray. So all, we have an interesting opponent. He does not retreat, he does not retaliate. My instincts tell me he wants a personal confrontation. The Raven lies to the south. All stop, all stop. be there by now. The professor has moved the Raven. Do we go back to the Nautilus? No, we'll play his game. Let's press on. Raven must be destroyed. Oh, no. We must welcome our guests. There's no need to kill them for the moment. you'd be visiting, but you seem to be a rather pathetic expeditionary force, sir. We are sufficient, Professor. And who are we? Commander Tom Franklin, United States Navy. I am Captain Nemo of the Nautilus. Ne the Captain Nemo? At your service, sir. Why, that's unbelievable. Yes, I knew I was up against a formidable when my missile readout did not show an on-target strike. You must have used an electric force field. I salute you, sir. Well, your technology is far beyond my poor capabilities, Professor. You have achieved a milestone. Mechanical creatures doing man's most sophisticated work. Bravo. Now, praise from you is flattery indeed. But you are an intelligent man, sir. You must realize your position here is hopeless. Why did you come? To stop you? Nothing in this world can stop me. I assume you're referring to that um, doomsday machine that you claim to have in your possession? Claim? Do you take me for a fraud? Follow me.
So much genius corrupted by evil. Surely all this should not be devoted to destruction. I offered options. I am a man of my word. I gave the president until 8 o'clock tonight. But you simply cannot eliminate an entire city. The guilt lies with the president. few intellects that I envy. Take them to the holding room. Aliens should die. All in good time. But first, I must siphon Nemo's brain. And after that, then aliens die. Then aliens die. Less than 30 minutes to the launch of the Doomsday Machine. History has been changed in less. <laughs> Station, battle station. Get Nemo, bring him to me. Divers after them. Tom, 
bring nuclear reactor to full power, fast. I'm on my way. Nemo is back on Nautilus. I'll vaporize him and his submarine. Activate the forward turret. Prepare the delta beam. Captain, you better line up that electric umbrella of yours. The professor finds out we're missing. He's coming out shooting. That will deplete my power. I need full nuclear capability. Die! Die! using a delta beam. You can't outrun it. That mountain will shield us. 40 degrees starboard. Aye, aye, sir. 40 degrees starboard. Steady as she goes. Steady as she goes, sir. Vaporize, Nemo. Aliens are dead. We made it, sir. We're safe, but Washington isn't. What is the time? Three minutes to eight. Then we still have three minutes. You'll see why I ordered the lieutenant to give me full nuclear power. This instrument can transmit a beam of concentrated light energy strong enough to keep all of New York glowing for a year. You've invented a laser beam. Whatever you call it, it's our only hope for stopping the missile and saving Washington. Only 90 seconds left, sir. I'm aware of the time, Commander. Captain Nemo, come in, Nautilus. Well done, Captain. So, I have settled my account with you. Wait. <laughs> the professor is still loose and still deadly dangerous. I am afraid that henceforth you shall have to deal with him. I sail for Atlantis. And with your kind permission, and of course if they are willing, I should like to take Commander Franklin and Lieutenant Porter with me. Hmm? Well, I'd like that very much, Mr. Fuller, if it's all right with you. Request a leave of absence, sir. 
granted. Repairs to Raven finish soon, but fuel tanks almost empty. I anticipated the fuel shortage. That's why we are this far west. All stop. Aye, aye, sir. All stop. Tor, you know what you have to do. Ignite magnet induction system. feet, directly above the Mindenauer Trench, which holds the steel casks which contain the radioactive debris that we need. The casks will give Raven power. And, yes, let's go fishing. Let's catch some radioactive fish that we can feed to my nuclear power plant. This is Miller calling Nautilus. Calling Captain Nemo. Come in, Nautilus. I'm here, Mr. Miller. Captain, I need the Nautilus. She is not for sale. I don't want to buy her. I have many submarines at my disposal, but none that can withstand the water pressure at 36,000 feet. Ah, the Mindanao Trench. Yes, our nuclear waste burial grounds. And there is absolute evidence of radioactive emissions there. I would remind you, Mr. Miller, that I have not yet joined the United States Navy. I am not under your command. But you are, in your own words, in my debt. My agency repaired the Nautilus and supplied you with the crew. I have not forgotten, sir, but I would think that saving Washington, D.C. from Professor Cunningham would be repayment with interest. Captain, strong currents could carry those radioactive wastes from one end of the Pacific to the other, killing millions. Mr. Miller, this planet has survived a hundred years of my absence. Captain, the United States and perhaps the world needs your help. Mr. Miller, I'm beginning to regret our relationship. This is no time for flattery, Captain. Very well. Mindanao it is. Thank you, Captain Nemo. Now, at Pearl Harbor, a nuclear physicist named Dr. Robert Cook will come aboard. Dr. Cook is one of those who chose the Mindanao Trench to bury our radioactive wastes. He will have an assistant with him. Miller out. You know, it's incredible that the man we're about to meet is over a hundred years old. Yes, it is quite incredible. Well, what you're saying, then, is that cryogenics really works and that the man has been asleep for over a hundred years. I was with him when he woke up. Please, this way. A beautiful lady among the lonely men of science. It's women's liberation, sir. They all want to be equal. For myself, I prefer the era when we believe them to be unique. No woman has ever served aboard Nautilus before. Thank you, Captain. I'm honored. So, Dr. Cook, you are the burial expert in the Mindanao Trench. Nobody has ever worked in waters that deep. We made our tests in the lab using simulated pressure conditions on miniature tanks. Those leaks keep up. It'll be my funeral. Lead me to the cemetery, Doctor. We shall seal those crypts. Come in. 
so glad you came along, Kate. I wanted to be with you. Well, that makes everything I'm doing really worthwhile, darling. You're not sorry. No. I wish your voice sounded a little more positive. I'm frightened. I just don't want anyone to be hurt. All I'm going to do is slow up Nemo for 24 hours. That's all. When it's done, there'll be enough money put in a Swiss bank account to make everything we've ever dreamed about come true. And no one aboard the Nautilus must be hurt. And no one will be. Kate, I promise. Trust me. Captain, I can't control the helm. Give it to me. We're three one five. We're way off course. What's happening? We're sailing north northwest. But the Mendenhall Trench is south. She's running away from us. I can't control Nautilus. What's happening? Why is it getting dark? I don't know. All engines, stop. Stop. Battle stations. Battle stations. Battle stations. Mines. Nothing like this has ever occurred to me before. It has to be the work of an enemy. All the way out here near the Mindanao Trench? By whom? Professor Cunningham. Again? Again. seems to be responding once more. All ahead, dead slow. Engine room. All ahead, dead slow. Now, we must stroll through this orchard without bruising the fruit. Stop. All engines stop. What is it, Captain? Shh. I believe a uh... Mine cable has become entangled in my fin. Well, what do we do now? We have to cut it loose. And how do we manage that? I manage that. 
Captain, be careful. It's more dangerous out there than just the mines. There's also an enormous amount of radioactivity in the waters now. How long can I remain in the water? Well, not more than four or five minutes. I'll watch the time. Captain, I'm going with you. It seems I'm a share of the glory, huh? Good man. Captain, you're coming in loud and clear. The mine is entangled around the port fin. Tom and I will need both hands free, so we'll leave our intercoms on. Right, sir. I'll go forward of the leading edge. You stay aft. Let's go. Take hold of it just above the fin and pull. Kate, have you been able to check out the radiation in the water yet? Another minute, Jim. I almost have it. I'll get right back to you. I want the helmsman to stand by. Captain, you have four and a half minutes to get back to the ship from the time that you entered the water. Now you've already used up 45 seconds. Jim, hard to port slowly. Helmsman. Hard to port slowly. Hard to port slow, sir. Now reverse engines slowly. Helmsman, reverse engines slowly. Captain, you only have two minutes and 50 seconds left. OK, Jim. Jim, does the captain know about the time? He has less than three minutes. I told him. Stop engines. Helmsman, stop engines. Stopping engines, sir. Shall we cut it loose? I'm afraid we have no choice. Captain, you have 40 seconds. All right, Jim. We're coming in. Professor Cunningham, do you hear me? Professor Cunningham. Loud and clear. Status report. I'm still alive. Well, you tried your best to kill me. You led Nemo into that minefield by putting Nautilus off course. Not you, Cook. I tried to destroy Nemo. And me with him. You wanted to sink Nautilus and you knew I was aboard. I'm through. Finished. Forget it. Now hear me out, Cook. Hear me out. If you bury Nemo in the Mindanao Trench, I will pay you double. You can't pay me enough to commit suicide. Listen, listen. I carry a mini sub. I assume the Nautilus carries a mini sub. You are clever. When you are finished with Nemo, use the mini sub to escape. Thirty-two thousand feet. Prepare to level. Aye, aye sir. Prepare to level. Three 
20,000 feet, we're nearing the bottom of the Mindanao Trench. Thirty-five thousand feet. All stop. All stop, sir. There's our problem, Captain. Those tiny dots are the radiation bubbles. Those leaks must be sealed. There's only one way. Weld them shut. It can be done from a bathysphere. I'd like to help out, but... I'm not quite as agile as I used to be. I'll be ready as soon as I can change into the radiation gear. No, Kate. You shouldn't go. <laughs> but I came here to help. Yes. Here aboard Nautilus. <laughs> well, I'll go where I'm needed. But you're not trained for the bathysphere. I'm a nuclear physicist. I am trained to deal with nuclear problems. The captain will handle the bathysphere. It's no place for you. Please don't hand me that weaker sex routine. I'm going. All right, Captain? I welcome your assistance. Prepare the bathysphere for diving. Stay in touch. I shall be in constant radio contact. I'll start the winch. Let us survey the battlefield. Those casks did not just rupture themselves. Those holes were drilled into the steel. Only one man could be that gifted and that cold-blooded. Professor Cunningham. Well, let's get on with it, Kate. There's a great deal of work to be done. Those casks must be sealed. Something the matter? I, I suddenly got very lightheaded. You're not receiving enough oxygen. No oxygen intake. Now, don't try to do anything. No exertion. Need more oxygen. Must increase. We should have heard from the captain by this time. Nautilus calling Captain Nemo. Come in, Captain. He doesn't respond. I can't reach him. There's trouble. Bring him up fast. not to go into the bathysphere with Nemo. Of course, Dr. Cook. It had to be you. Hardly a scientific deduction. 
It is pure logic. Nautilus operates under a perpetual checklist. Also, I had Tom inspect all the instrumentation today. Now, I myself have inspected it. There remains only sabotage. My crew is loyal, and Kate was with me in the bathosphere. I see. And just what do you propose to do about it? I shall put you in irons and finish my job here. That may be a bit difficult if you're dead. <laughs> As you know, Doctor, I do not die very easily. I'm a persistent man, Captain. <laughs> Acknowledge, Cook. This is Raven. Acknowledge, Cook. Cook, ac contact Cook and tell him we need more time for those casks. Tell him to keep the Nautilus away until he hears from me. Cook, this is Raven. Report. No contact? No, sir. It's the professor. Get him on the screen. We meet again, Professor. Cook is dead. But as you can see, Professor, I am still very much alive. Your presence no longer interests me, Captain. It should. I'm going to stop you. <laughs> How noble. How childish. You should be chasing windmills, Captain. You are obsolete. We shall see. I intend to seal off the Mindanao Trench. Prepare Delta Beam, then. Prepare Delta Beam. You're determined to commit suicide? I am determined to rid the world of the black shadow that you're spreading over free men. I am sick of you! I am tired of you! Now and forever! I have work to do! Now I have important work to do! I have a destiny to fulfill! I am a savior! Captain, you're fighting a duel without a weapon. The professor will be coming out shooting, and we're only able to move at one quarter speed. We'll be like a sitting duck. We shall be several sitting ducks. Right full rudder. Right full rudder, sir. Captain, you're sending Nautilus around in circles. Precisely. Captain, what are you doing? I am linking the chemical formulas needed for kinetic projection. Within 60 seconds, I shall begin cloning Nautilus. There will be many Nautilus submarines. You mean you can make more than one Nautilus? It can look that way. Think of a picture screen on which you see an image. I can create many images. We shall give the professor an entire barnyard of ducks.
I have projected this clone directly into the Mindanao Trench. The professor's following it. Of course. He wants to be certain of his quarry. Hold your fire. New reading? 70 degrees south by southeast. 70 degrees south by southeast. Now fire. End of Nautilus. End of Nemo. Aliens remain alive. Not for long. No reading. 30 degrees south by southeast. 30 degrees south by southeast. Fire delta beam! Casks are buried. Congratulations, Captain. And I'm not picking up the Raven on the scanner anymore. It was there a minute ago, but now it's gone. Maybe it's in the trench, too. Maybe it's not. The professor alluded us once. He may have done so again. So, the Azores, the Iberian Peninsula, Spain, Portugal, Straits of Gibraltar, Pillars of Hercules. My search is reaching an end. Atlantis is near at hand. Come round to course 091. Aye, aye, sir. Coming to new course 091. Call ahead, one third. Ahead, one third. Reduce speed to one knot. One knot, sir. Hard left rudder. Hard left rudder, sir. Gentlemen, the fabled, magnificent continent of Atlantis, dead ahead. It is Atlantis. We made it. Congratulations, Captain. Good going. We did it. Man, oh man. It's a mirage. It is real.
come and see us as our guest. He seems friendly enough. Do you speak our language? No, that's dangerous. So, you do understand me. Isn't it about time you told us who you are? I'm Tibor, King of Atlantis. We are from the surface. Why have you imprisoned us? You're trespassers. We are trespassers, but we come to your land as peaceful travelers. So spoke the other. The other? He also came in a vessel such as this. He was faithless and false. He took prisoners and departed, warning us that he would return. But we come to learn, not to conquer. We are at your service. The other was treacherous. Why should I believe you'll be different? Your Majesty, I am a man of honor. Even if I should accept your offer, the Great Council must agree. Lead us to them. There's a special entrance to our land. You shall be my navigator. With your permission, may I lead the way? Your Majesty. Won't you please? I await your orders, Your Majesty. This direction, slowly. All ahead, slow. All ahead, slow. We have come to Atlantis. But how is that possible? Atlantis is out there. No. That's the old Atlantis, abandoned long ago. Earthquakes made it uninhabitable. We've gone below the floor of the ocean for the new Atlantis. Its entrance is now right beneath your ship. Follow me. out, it's dry. You can turn off the pump. From here to Atlantis is like moving from one room to another. Follow me. I don't like the looks of this. Set aside your fears, Commander. You're witnessing a historic occasion. On to Atlantis, the mystic, fabled, lost continent. Where are they? They've just reached Atlantis. Get the picture back. I can't. 
picture could be deliberately scrambled. I'm going after him. Great Council. He is Nemo. Why is the alien brought to the sacred chamber of the Great Council? I am here to offer my service. Silence! One does not speak before us without permission. Nemo comes as a friend. Have we not learned that such friends are indeed enemies? You are I right, stand Trog. With Trog. We have had enough treachery. I know you have suffered. I am here to help. So said the first. Then took my brother prisoner. This is true. Yes, he comes like the other who stood before us. He extends his hand like the other, and the other deceived us. Now we have the advantage. He must die. The alien must die. I have heard enough of this barnyard cackling. I am not here to die. Silence, I said. You have no choice in the matter. You're a prisoner. Wrong, citizen. You are my prisoners. I could have killed all of you, and I did not do so. Is that the act of a conqueror? My weapons are to be used against your oppressors, not against you. And this is only a small part of my arsenal. Come to my submarine, and I will show you. I'm the king, so you will show me first. Allow us to accompany you, Your Majesty. If we have lost too many Atlanteans, we must not risk our king. I trust Nemo. Let them come, Your Majesty. You will be as safe with them as without them. This is your captain. Prepare laser for firing. Come with me. Can you hear me? What are we seeing, Captain? I don't know. Tom, report. Come in, Tom. Acknowledge. Those of my men who are not in a trance are gone. We have been deserted. Where are your two countrymen? Sirik was there with Borg. My generator is alive again. We're moving. I'm 
lost control of my submarine. <laughs> the afterburners can be manually activated. With them, I can regain control of Nautilus. commanded to transport them aboard the captain's mini-sub. Sir, aliens on board. Good, good. Welcome, Captain. I grow weary of your presence, Professor. Captain, this is the man who captured many of my people after I permitted him to meet with us. Then we shall make this the final meeting, then. Eh? Tor, here. Would you please take Tybor to the holding room? And gentlemen, would you guard your king? <laughs> Tom, what are you doing here? What happened to you? I don't know, sir. I was on the Nautilus, then I was here, wearing this headband. It gives me messages. Take it off. All right. I can't. He can't, you see. He can take orders from me, and only from me, and so shall you. Never. What have you done with my crew? They're frozen. They're frozen in time. There's a uh, process we call the Z-ray. It's a very simple equation, really. I want them returned immediately. Now, strap him up. shall have your head for this. Oh, no, sir. It is not you who shall have my head. It is I who shall have yours, for I intend to extract every bit of knowledge that you possess by, by tapping your brain. Yes. Tapping your brain. Yeah. Yeah. I, I need your knowledge, sir. I need it. You see, combined with mine, I shall become the foremost intellect on this planet, and that is necessary. May I explain why? By this hour tomorrow, I shall inherit the Earth, quite literally. Now, explanation. Imagine, sir, the most destructive element in the world of primordial density, harnessed, sir, to a foolproof homing device, direct to any target, I have it. And with it, I intend to devastate every capital city in the world. Show him. Show him. There. That's the crow's our element. It is deadly, sir. It is, it is condemned. It is banned by every nation in the world. And I have 20 of them in a pod here, right below, ready for blast-off. At Z minus one, they will be catapulted into the atmosphere like darts from an Aborigines blowgun. And immediately thereafter, I shall be forced to proclaim myself leader of the planet Earth. But this is monstrous. You cannot destroy the lives of hundreds of millions of people. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> I can and will, you know. This countdown cannot be aborted. Blast off is at 3 p.m. Tom, I need you. Ha. How can you command him when you cannot command your own mind, sir? 
Tend me, Captain. I want the structural details. I want the formula of your laser beam. Never. No. <laughs> I want the blueprint of the source of your power, the nuclear reactor. And when I have that, sir, I shall have your entire arsenal of weapons. No. Oh, yes! Tom. Tom. Listen to Mr. Miller. We three are members of a naval intelligence unit. It's an elite group, assigned only to combat the highest priority threats to the United States. They take their orders from me. But our entire organization takes orders from one man only. Tom! This instrument is called a telephone. And it connects me directly with the White House in Washington, D.C. Pitiful chapter in your life. Let's slip through. We'll not help you. We'll not. Tom, listen to Miller. Commander Franklin and Lieutenant Porter are two of the Navy's most experienced underwater intelligence experts, Captain. They were specifically chosen to counter the threat of Professor Cunningham. They were specifically chosen to counter the threat of Professor Cunningham. He is Professor Cunningham. Tom, remove the headband. Tom, remove the headband. Release me, Tom. What's going on, Captain? Professor Cunningham intends to destroy the world, but we will not let him. We have 47 minutes. That instrument you removed from your head made you the professor's prisoner. Wear it without the transistor. It may gain us time to save the king. Sirak, that way. The professor wants you. When the professor locked us away. This door slid open. Just like that. Oh, thank you, my friends. Let's get out of here. This way. These devices made them obey the professor. Your Majesty, where are we? What, what has happened to us? There's no time to explain. We must get off this boat immediately. But the Crozar element's still here on the Raven. We have only one chance. That is to sink the Raven before the countdown is completed. You mean drown the Crozar element? Precisely. Hurry. Nemo is Professor's prisoner. The Professor is finished with me, Tor. Then you must die. Bork and Sirak have freed the king. They all must die. I think not. <laughs> get through that force field. That's battle stations. Your Majesty, take the mini-sub and go back to Atlantis at once. I wish to remain. The three of you must leave here now. Captain, I cannot hide while you risk your life for my people. If the Professor captures you, then he controls Atlantis forever. Your only salvation is the mini-sub. Without it, you'll be helpless. Don't worry about us. Go back. Hurry. All right. I'll take the mini-sub back to Nautilus and pray for your return. Thank you. Go. Thanks. Where's 
is Nemo? Nemo escaped with King and Atlanteans. Not for long. Unfreeze them. Kill Nemo! Kill the others! Kill! Good dog. Nice dog. Let's get back on the Nautilus. I 
like I'm back from the dead. You are. Tom, what's going on? No time for explanations, Jim. I need full nuclear power. The lives of millions of people depend on it. Count on me, sir. Haven't any of you seen Nemo? Nemo is free. He's sailing to his grave. Prepare Delta Beam. Rightful rudder. Ahead two thirds. takes care of the professor. Goodbye, my friend. Goodbye, Your Majesty. I cannot begin to thank you. You have freed my people. That shall always remain the most cherished memory of my life. But I shall not return to Atlantis, nor shall any creature from Earth. You have had enough of such guests. Let Atlantis remain untouched by our progress. I shall always be grateful to you. You know, I'd like to have one last look at Atlantis before we go. Agreed, Lieutenant. Right standard rudder. Steer course 090. Aye, aye, sir. Right standard rudder coming to course 090. 